If he's not running one of his hundred-plus guide trips a year on Truman Lake, he's rising through the ranks as a professional bass fisherman. Our guest today is the winner of the 2022 Toyota Series event at Lake of the Ozarks, Brock Renkemeyer. This is the Tackle HD Podcast. Brock, welcome to the Tackle HD Podcast. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me on, man. Appreciate it. So uh, to start off, I would like to just find out a little more about your background as it pertains to fishing. I know right now you are a tournament pro. You found a lot of success over the last year, and you're also a guide on Truman Lake. So have you kind of always been based at Truman? Uh, for the most part, yeah. I moved down here full time a few years back, and uh, I've been guiding and fishing tournaments ever since. And it's kind of what I wanted to do, so I went and did it. When did you fish your very first tournament? Ooh, it was uh, it was a while. Ago. It was like right after I got out of high school. Me and my dad would kind of hit some local stuff here and there, and then uh -huh. come down and fish Joe Bass Team Trail here at Truman, uh -huh. and got our butts whooped, and uh, finally started figuring some stuff out fishing that. <laughs> Have you always been um, just competing in the world of bass, or did you ever do any of the other stuff? No, nah, just bass. Just bass. Yep. Your dad was a big fisherman. Uh, no, I kind of. He was a crappie guy, and uh, we've had a lake house down here at Truman for ever since I was born, really. Okay. And uh, I kind of got him into the bass fishing whenever I was like twelve or thirteen. I started getting interested in that, and so he. How old are you now, food. if you don't mind me asking? I'm thirty. Okay. So you just turned 30. Okay. Yeah. Um, so Truman Lake, obviously known as one of the best places to fish in Missouri, but it's a place that isn't nearly as known as Lake of the Ozarks. It doesn't see the traffic um, that the Ozarks gets. For anybody watching that's not super familiar with Truman Lake as a fishery, what are some things you can uh, tell us, teach us about that lake that kind of make it unique and make it such a great place to fish? Well, unlike Ozarks, instead of a bunch of docks, we got a bunch of trees and a bunch of them. <laughs> yeah. So you got to definitely know how to navigate the river channels and stuff. And I think that's what shies people away from coming here is because uh, all the hazards of the trees and stuff, they get scared and they think they got to be in them. But really, you don't have to be all up in them to catch fish. Hmm. Is it... Um... I, I guess a lot of it has to do with like, they don't really let houses be right on the water like they do. In, like, no, no, it can go up. I've seen it go up like 40 feet high. So I think that's like their max pool is 40 foot above normal. Okay. And so the core owns like so far up the bank and you can't build anywhere on, on the bank anywhere. So with all the trees, I guess that's, you know, kind of knocks out a lot of uh, just recreational boating, tubing, skiing. Yeah, kind of <laughs> I mean, you'll see a lot of that on the lower end, like from Osage Bluff to uh, like Longshore Marina. That's all safe. I mean, you shouldn't have to worry about much around mm -hmm. there. So I know you do the guided trips. Um, from what I was able to gather on guided trips for a couple different species, I guess, based on time of the year or what the client's looking for. You do bass, you do crappie, and you do white bass. So uh, right now we are in the middle of December, 2022. That's when this is being recorded. What are you primarily chasing right now? Mostly crappie. Uh, the white bass, they start slowing down. I hear recently the white bass were doing, they were up on the bank eating I mean, we'd throw rooster tails at them and we'd primarily do that about all fall long until it starts hitting this like 45 degrees and they start slowing down. Mm -hmm. So then we jump back over to crappie for the most part all uh, winter long. For uh, regular bass fishing, what do you think are the, you know, what's that best window of time? Uh, like season wise? Yeah. Or, um, man, yeah, I've seen April. I'll, I would say all of April, all the way up to the spawn. I would say that's a really good time to go bass fishing on this lake. I've had some killer days in April out here. Is there much of a smallmouth population at Truman? No, nah, I've, I've never caught one. I don't think there are any in here. There honestly. could be zero. Yeah. There's, yeah. Maybe way yeah. up somewhere, but I, I I've never seen one. 
Um, so Dave McCormick, uh, tr- uh, big Truman Lake yeah. tournament guy who I'm sure, you know, Dave for the last, I don't know, probably seven months was doing our, uh, tackle HD fishing reports for Truman Lake talking about bass fishing. And, uh, he reached out to me in November and he was like, Hey, just a heads up, basically from Thanksgiving until February, I'm not on Truman at all because it kind of turns into a crappie fishing lake and, uh, uh, yeah. a catfish lake. Yeah. Um, and so for this chunk of time, he's over at Lake of the Ozarks doing his fishing. Is that pretty much what you see down there? Uh, yeah, it starts getting pretty, uh, like he said, the cat fishermen start coming out and then you'll see some crappie guys out there dipping those mm-hmm. deeper trees. But uh, bass fishing kind of slows down a little bit. Not saying you can't catch them here. I mean, you can still, I've had some great days out here on a jerk bait or just slow rolling a spinner bait and wiggle warts, stuff like that, but just real mm-hmm. slow. You can't fish fast. Interesting. Um, so I was watching, I was trying to do my homework on you and I was watching an interview you did with the guys from uh, Truman Fishing Intel and they were talking about crappie fishing because you do guide for that. So obviously you know how to catch crappie, you know everything about that. And I, I chuckled with the guy brought up, you know, d- do you think you'll ever do uh, get into those crappie tournaments? And you just laughed and were like, absolutely not. <laughs> I, I just kind of wondered if you would elaborate on that. I don't know much about competitive crappie fishing, but um, what is it about it that that has you just like, no, 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 not my thing? Uh, I don't know. I'm just, I like the big fish. I mean, not saying the crappie are small, but mm-hmm. I'd rather go... Uh, cast and reel for them rather than just dipping dipping trees and stuff of that nature different style yeah Yeah. it's just i don't know it's not my thing to i'd rather cast and reel for them and have a chance Um, at a 10 pounder (laughs) absolutely what what's the best that you've caught at truman uh i've caught a like close to six and a half is my biggest one here but my buddy brad he's caught an eight and a quarter a couple years ago in april Yep. And then he, about, like the next week, he caught a seven and a quarter. So they live in here. April's the best time to try for them, too. Really? Yeah. Outside of Truman, what's your personal best pass? Uh, 782, I think, at Lake of the Ozarks. Gotcha. How long ago? Uh, that, I think that was two years ago. I think it was in, uh, I think that was in April. Too. Okay. There you go. April. So March and April is whenever I got a chance at a big one. <laughs> So if anybody's looking to book a, a bass trip with you, March, April, yep. that's when you want to get out with Brock. Um, so let's talk a little bit about you as a tournament guy. Um, the last couple of years for you have been very, very successful. Um, I have seen you mentioned on all the fishing websites, all of the Facebook groups. Um, you won the Toyota series event at Lake of the Ozarks, which was back in March. So let's mentally go back there. And I just want to kind of pick your brain. Did you, did you do anything differently heading into that tournament as far as, you know, changing your approach or was it just, it was just your weekend? Uh, I'd say the only thing I've changed in my approach was, sneaking up on the fish like my spots uh it was mostly don't scare them with the boat and make really long casts i think that was the number one thing that i learned from last year's uh event out there is i was uh getting hung up and messing everything up and getting too close to them i feel like so i was more sneaky this time really (laughs) yeah it, I mean, it worked. You won over $40,000 with the first place finish for that weekend. Is that something that you, you now see yourself doing when, when you're out there at these tournaments, being, yeah. being a sneaky angler? Yep. I was actually really? doing it last weekend out at uh, Lake of the Ozarks with a spinner bait. I was trying uh-huh. to be very sneaky around those docks and not spook anything. Where do you prefer to fish? Lake of the Ozarks or Truman? Uh, I know you live at Truman, but. I mean, I like Truman in April and then all summer. I like Truman. I like mm-hmm. trying to find them in the summertime on that offshore stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would say Lake of the Ozarks has got a lot of bass in it. So I would, I would have to say Lake of the Ozarks. Okay. Is there a 10 pound bass in Truman Lake? Do you think? I, I believe so. I know there's an eight, so there's gotta be, 
There's got to be a 10 pounder somewhere in there. (laughs) Um, Okay. So back to the tournament in March, you're in that top, were you in the top spot going into the final day? Uh, I think so. Okay. So, you know, you're, you're close to a very significant check. You know, you've just got it. You've got to keep it together. What was going through your head as far as, you know, when you woke up that morning, okay, this is going to be my plan. This is what I need to do to, to stay in the money. Yeah. Um, I was just trying not to freak out and fish too fast. Honestly, I was just telling myself, slow down the whole, that whole morning of it. Don't get all freaked out and whatnot. Just keep your head in it and slow down. Let it come to you. Don't, don't force it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, that weekend, your three day total, 15 bass, you weighed in 59 pounds, 13 ounces, got you a check of $41,750. When you win a a big tournament like that and get to hold that big check up, um, do things change for you? Does the phone start ringing? Do you start getting the emails from the brands saying like, Hey, would you ever have any interest in slapping our name on the side of your boat or on your Jersey, anything like that? Uh, not, not too much. I mean, I'm not the guy to go chase that kind of stuff. I don't know what it is about me, but I'm kind of too much, keep to myself quite a bit, but, uh, I've had some few people call and text and whatnot, which I really appreciate. But, um, I mean, it hasn't changed much for me. The, the most that's changed for me is, uh, knowing that I can compete in that level and want to keep getting higher in the ranks, like fishing, like the invitationals, we're going to all fish this coming year and have confidence in going in there and doing that and not just getting my butt kicked. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So what does 2023 look like for you as far as competition goes? Uh, We're going to do the MLF invitationals primarily. So, uh, I think there's like six or seven of those derbies all across the country. And uh, we're going to focus on those and then probably do possibly do the Plains Division Toyota Series like I did this year. Okay. And then that'd be and then some local stuff here and there whenever I'm bored or not busy doing guides and stuff. So as far as those local tournaments and derbies, I mean, you are a professional fisherman. You were you were up there. How do the rules go as far as that stuff? Because I, I've heard some of the guys talk about, you know, like the big bass bash, for example, and they're like, "Yeah, they don't let me fish it." Like, how does that? How does that stuff work? Um, yeah, there's some of them have restrictions, like the big bass bash. You can't, you can't guide on the lake, and then you can't uh, if you've won like over ten thousand dollars in like big events or something. Mm-hmm then or in bass fishing in general that year then you're not allowed to fish it okay so basically they're trying to just keep it as a true and, amateur yeah event. yeah which is cool for the big bass bash for them to do that i think that's awesome yeah yeah and and the guiding thing too i mean that's that's almost an unfair advantage i mean you've got that whole yeah. place mapped and you know right that, that's not really fair to a guy like me who shows up with my 120 bucks and and, yeah. and like i want to take a crack at it too yeah. <laughs> hey but it's only one fish one that's fish it. is all you need <laughs> exactly yeah anybody can do it those events yeah. are awesome yeah um so what was your what was your next best you know finish uh i would say uh third i got third here at truman for the that Toyota series back in September. I was leading it after two days and then, uh, I didn't blow it, but I, I didn't catch a big one on the last day. So it dropped me to third place, but I was happy about it. Yeah. Well, like you said, you're climbing those ranks and and just getting your name out there. And, and I'm sure confidence is such a big player in all of this. Like, do I want to make the investment to drive, haul my boat up to New York you know, yeah. and all this to just get, just get demolished by these guys and just drive home sad and broke. You know? Right. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, you've, you've got to have the confidence going into it. Yeah. So that's cool. And at the same time, whenever I get my butt kicked, I still, I mean, the next week I'm like, I need to get back there and see what I did wrong. Like exactly figure it exactly. out. Cause those guys obviously figured it out. Why can't I? Right. 
Yeah, it's fishing. Anybody, it's just like the Big Bass Bash. Anybody can go out there and just have the day of their life. And yeah, it's, it's like it's like playing the lottery. <laughs> so there are down at Lake of the Ozarks and in, in, in the Truman area, there's no shortage of legendary tournament anglers. Um, yeah, there's plenty of them. <laughs> who are, you know, some of the guys that you've gotten to spend some time with that have kind of, you know, influenced you and, and you know, maybe kind of taken you under their wing over these years as you've been making your way through the ranks? Um, I would say I met my buddy Brad Jelinek. Uh, mm-hmm. His dad and his uncle, uh, Jason and Joey Jelinek, they've actually uh, kind of helped me along with the guiding and stuff because they've been guides out here for like 25 years. And uh, so they kind of helped me out in the last few years, get going and started up and figuring out how to do these uh, guide trips and whatnot. So big Mm -hmm. shout out to them for uh, definitely kind of hold my hand on that. But uh, for the most part, like legendary people, I mean, I've fished against like Jerry McCutcheon is somebody I look up to uh, out here at Truman. And then, um, I would say Lake of the Ozarks. I look up to like Roger Fitzpatrick and even Marcus Sakura. Um, there's so many names out there that I look up to and to compete against them and beat them. It, it's a, uh, it's a pretty good feeling, but I wish I had them as like my mentors, but uh, it's mostly been just me and Brad just kind of putting our heads together and going fishing all the time with each other and figuring it out. I mean, there's no substitute for just figuring it out yourself and putting in the work and, you know, um, well, both Marcus and Roger have been guests on this show doing exactly what you're doing now, sitting down and talking to me and both great guys. Um, have you ever, do you ever just reach out to those guys and like, Hey man, I'm going to be, I'm going to be down there next week. Any chance, you know, do you have oh, any, yeah, here any time to get out on the water with me? Do you do that? Do, do, do pro fishermen do that? Uh, we don't really fish with each other, but we'll definitely, uh, ask and see how they're doing and if they're on them or not, you know, kind of joke back and forth if we're catching them or not. You don't try to get out there but, on the boat with them though. No, they're pretty tight lip. They don't want me knowing. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get it. That was, uh, yeah. Dion, uh, Hibden was on a couple of weeks ago and, um, that was something that he, he really kind of got into. I, I asked him if he guides cause his, his dad, his grandfather were guides down there. And yeah. he said a little, and he said, and, it was interesting. He said, it's not worth 500 bucks in my pocket to take somebody out there and show them secrets that it has taken my family a hundred years to acquire. He said, it's not, it, yeah. that's not worth it to me. So he said, I'll take some people out here and there, just, you know, friends, that kind of a thing. But, um, but he said, I don't have any interest in, uh, in giving up the secret. Right. I, I totally respect that. Yep. I mean, that's a lot of knowledge there under one roof there at the Hibden house. Yeah. And it'd be hard to give up all that, especially whenever you got three of them fishing out there against each other. Most of the time. I mean, exactly. I always wonder with them. I'm like, they must all just, I get this part of the lake, you get this one and you get right. the other. And it. one of us ought to do good in it. <laughs> sometimes they all do good at the same time. So yeah. hats off to them for that. So before I get off of the, uh, you know, the, the tournament, the competition stuff, I got to bring up and you've probably are, are sick of talking about it, but, um, you know, these guys that got busted at that walleye tournament, stuffing the fish with, uh, everything from, you know, those big egg sinkers to walleye fillets. And I mean, you, you have to know that the cheating goes on here and there in any, any kind of a competitive thing, especially when money's on the line. In the world of competitive bass fishing, um, has have you seen any shockwaves make it to you guys where they're doing things differently now in the tournaments? Not necessarily. I've seen, I mean, of course, we get lie detector tests and uh, people can protest somebody if they think they're uh, cheating or suspicion of them cheating and mm-hmm. they can protest it and they can get a lie detector test or whatever, but I haven't. I haven't really seen anything like any extra precautions after that deal for them to do other, I don't know, sure. tests or whatever you want to call right, it. Right. 
because I'm not, I, I mean, I yeah. guess there's some kind of a, you could, you could wand the fish to, and if there was anything metal in there, right. there's, there's that. But that's what got pretty me was sad. The, we got to do that though. I know. I, I know. Mean, that's terrible. But I mean, what? it's true. I mean, those guys got away with it for a long time and it's almost unbelievable. And it's like, they thought they were probably cool doing that. Like, man, we're getting away with it and we have been. That's, yeah. that's messed up. What what really threw me though was when they were finding walleye fillets in there, and it's like, okay, well, that's something that you can wand the fish or whatever, and they right. wouldn't be able to know unless you unless you opened up that fish. But isn't it isn't the thing with walleye tournaments the fish don't have to still be alive? I guess so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because those the, are otherwise you, you, would, you wouldn't get away with that with bass. Yeah, they would have they would have been dead for sure, right? I mean, those yeah. things weren't still living after that. Maybe no. they were, but no chance. No ch <laughs> Surely not. Not with that yeah. much weight in them. No. Gosh. Well, yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see. But that was that was the first thing when when I saw that. It's like, okay, now everybody knows that there's cheating going on with all this money yeah. on the line. People are gonna be out there demanding all these, all these new things are in place to make sure it doesn't happen in the world of bass fishing. But, um, so the lie detector thing. So let's say, you know, you, after you won that tournament, somebody, somebody could just go to the, the organization and say, I, I think there's something. Yeah. Fishy yeah about they can, this. yep. They can write a little, uh, write it in their notebook and just hand it to the director and say, Hey, I want to protest this guy. I think there's something fishy going on. I seen him in a Creek doing, you know, whatever looked like he was cheating or something. Yeah. Or somebody came down the bank and gave them something or who knows what right, the right, scenario right. would be, but you're allowed and to protest. And then the way it people. plays out is the organization then comes to you and says, Hey, yep. somebody, somebody is yep. protesting you. So you need to now take this lie detector that it's just automatic. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. I mean, I've never, does that happen I, a lot? I, I know not that I've seen, okay. I've not seen anybody be protested. Hmm. Yeah. Thankfully. I, yeah. Yeah. You don't want that yeah. stuff in the sport. Well, okay. So on to, um, you know, your other thing, which is guiding. You are a guide at Truman Lake. You do it pretty much all the time that you're not on the road for tournaments, right? That's your fishing is your full time gig, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I usually uh, do all my guides on the weekday and, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is the preferred day for me. So I'm not out on the road or something and doing bass fishing on the weekends. Sure. How many guide trips do you think you did in 2022? Uh, I don't even know. Uh, I would say like average, like two a week, two or three a week, probably. That's awesome. Uh, I'm not really, I haven't really been promoting it too much, but uh, I'm going to start thinking about it now. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, a, I couldn't find a website for you. I mean, I, yeah. you have social media, but your social media is not pushing yeah. guide trips. Your social no. media is, is just, you know, showing all the stuff that you catch. Yeah. Um, so for anybody watching right now, and I'll, I'll put the info on the screen, um, if they are interested in getting together with you for a Truman guide trip, how can they reach out to you? Uh, on my Facebook page or Instagram page, uh, you can just shoot me like a private message on there or post whatever. And, uh, I'll definitely get back with you on it. Gotcha. Or you can call me at, uh, 816-260-1696. Fantastic, Brock. I appreciate you being on. Um, I can't let you go without talking about Tackle, because this is the Tackle HD show. Um, you see behind me, I've got a couple of, of retail displays. These are actually the displays that people will find in Walmarts from like mm. mid-Missouri on down into Arkansas. There's like 120 stores that have these things, and they're stocked up with uh, three different products. Our High Def Craw, our Helgramite, the regular size Helgramite, and then also the smaller version, the Nedmite. So um, people out there, if you've come across these in Walmart, check it out. Always got great prices on them. And of course, you can buy all of our stuff at the uh, link you see below, tacklehd.com. Um, Brock, what from our line have you been able to put to use and have success with? I've seen that, uh, is it the HD crawl? Uh, mm -hmm. That It looks realistic as a crawdad gets in my my honest opinion. I've seen that thing. I'm like, wow, that looks just like a crawdad. Mm -hmm. It's made more from than a, any other a 3D scan. Yeah. Yeah. More than any other trailer or crawl I've ever seen. It looks the most realistic for sure. Mm -hmm. Um what about uh and the hard the, the spinnerbait guy, a jerkbait guy? Yeah, I've been using the 
that spinner that Ozark Flash spinner bait quite a bit. The Trophy Bass Absolutely. Company one. Yeah, the Trophy Bass my, Company. Yeah, that's my go-to. Really, and then the buzz bait, the uh, worldwide buzz bait. That's a good one. It's got a good uh, sound to it. Awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's uh, James Watson's and then uh, Casey's spinner bait. Um, Brock, thank you so much for being on the show. Again, throw out uh, your phone number for anybody if they're interested in, in guide trips and reaching out to you. Uh, 816-260-1696. All right, Brock. Well, hey, best of luck in uh, the, the tournament world in 2023. And thanks for a little bit of your time, man. I appreciate you, man. Thanks for having me on. Thank you.